Good morning and welcome to Friday, baby. Yeah, we've made it once again. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. We had, we had a few sprinkles this morning. I mean, it wasn't, I wouldn't call it rain, but but almost rain anyway. Uh, it's going to be a great day. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Uh, before I get too far today, we got a great event. Up at the radio station in Colorado, we got to talk about, uh, we're going to have the Rev. Uh, Paul Mist is going to be uh, doing a survival uh, class tonight from 6 to 8 at the radio station. Uh, the Johnstown Subway is providing the food for us. It should be a great, great event. Uh, really, really cool stuff. You know, what, what's going to happen after the Great Reset? They come in handy, so it should be a packed house. Just remember, just remember, 6 o'clock is when it starts. If you get there a little early, just keep the noise level down, you know, because Leah Live's just wrapping up her show, uh, and, and it can get a little loud in there. So, so be respectful of that. But otherwise, it's going to be another great Friday night at the radio station. Our toll-free number here, 800-951-0592. The website at allamericangold.com. And, and you know, we, we got articles, videos every day. And make All American Gold part of your daily routine. Ramon, by the way, uh, our producer here in Phoenix at, at KXXT, uh, he handles our website uh, articles and videos. He does a great job doing that. Ryan, who hosts our website and does all that stuff, he does a great job. I mean, it's just, you can be out there forever. You know, you all, and same thing with 1360KHNC.com. You can, you, can spend all, you can spend all day out there. we got all kinds of great stuff and podcasts. And, and we even got some podcasted shows that aren't even on the air. Uh, we, we've got uh, a blog over there at 1360 KHMC as well. Uh, of course, the shopping cart page. I, I will tell you, yesterday, the pickleball season started back up. So uh, here in Arizona right now, the, the golf courses are getting overseeded, which is the for the for the local for the local folk. That's that's a sad day. Because it means when the overseeding is over, the price to play golf will double and triple and quadruple. So the golfing season will come to uh, a big slowdown. But that's when we fire up the pickleball. And I will tell you, it is, I love it. Uh, and, and we hadn't played, you know, it's just, you know, it's 115 degrees outside. You're not playing pickleball. But it was, it was, uh, we play under the lights. It was in the mid '90s, which isn't that bad here. Uh, I will tell you that uh, I need an IV of CBD. Uh, the my my uh, let's just say the muscles are a little sore today, Jason, from all the running around I did. Uh, but what I did, I, I will say this: when I got home, I took one. Of, I took the bath salts, the CBD bath salts, soaked in that. I actually thought. It was going to be a difficult because I could barely walk when I got home last night. You know, uh, they always te teach you, "Hey, you got to stretch." Yeah, I didn't stretch enough last night. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't have a pickleball or golfing regiment, so <laughs> I, just, I have a uh, I have a radio station regiment, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, it's a big building, so I do get I, I do move around quite a bit, but. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, I stay busy enough here that it's hard to get the uh, hard to get the workouts in, hard to to, to, to stay uh, physically active. But uh, I, I do what I can. But I uh, I've always stayed physically fit, Joe, as best I could, and so I don't. Right, yeah, you're definitely point. in better shape than I am, uh, but I'm better looking. So you know, <laughs> it kind of evens out. Well, of course, I may be the only one that agrees with that. Statement, I had the beholder, Joe. Right. It's, it's no, but, I, but, I had the beholder. But, yeah. <laughs> now, but today, today's actually, you know, I, and we, you know, so Jason it runs the office in Colorado. We always tell people uh, that that call and, and, and order products, and they want to come and they want to pick up. Uh, we always warn people that listen. Friday is the probably the busiest day on Jason's calendar. He's probably not going to call you today. Probably won't be till next week. 
because uh, not only do you have uh, all the radio that you do, then, of course, you do Fake News Friday. That's a two-hour show yep. this afternoon. So you're going to do like five hours of radio. Uh, right. In between that, handle some gold and silver customers. Then afterwards, uh, you're going to be there for the event. Right, and the thing you skipped was is all the programming and uh, buttoning up of the radio station. Because really, that, that's what gives me the most uh, heartburn. Because if I don't get the radio station, new commercials, you know, rotators, and all these terms that don't really matter to the radio audience, if that isn't done right, then suddenly I get a call on Saturday from Rick, and I get these calls from, on Saturday from Rick, hey, Jason, it's not playing, something's shut off, it's not working, and, and uh, suddenly it becomes a Saturday job. Yeah, that, that's... Yeah, the dreaded Rick phone call on the weekend. Of course, Rick Rodriguez uh, runs our boards for us on the weekend, does his show on the weekend. Uh, but, yeah, I'm really excited about uh, Paul today. What a great what a great time to have a class like that. That should be really uh, a, a gr uh, just a really great little thing here. And, of course, uh, today on the Half Empty Cup of Joe, we're going to have Glenn Tate from Prepping 2.0. So it's kind of like a, a Prepping Friday. That's right. That's right. And then Bucky is trying to schedule as many great uh, speaking guests on these Friday events. And uh, we're going to put a movie night in there about once a, once a month or so. So it's, these Friday night gatherings are going to be pretty cool. A lot of buzz around the radio station, Joe. Awesome. Hey, when we get back, uh, we're going to talk economics, uh, the fallout from Jay Powell. What are gold and silver doing after the beatdown from yesterday? We'll bring it all to you. Pick the radio news hour. Don't touch that dial. 800-951-0592. I gotta, you know what? I got to talk to uh, to Jerry over at my kind. See if he can come up with uh, uh, a CBD IV. That that would definitely come in handy right now. Uh, where where do we go? You know what? We we had the Fed the other day on Wednesday, and here was the best part. That that made me. Uh, made me chuckle a little bit you know because the dow jumped like 500 points gold was down and i think gold was down like 30 bucks at one point uh, right. gold's up 10 bucks today but it doesn't matter. doesn't matter all semantics and the best part was i was reading uh the the wall street guys you know the guys they parade out on tv and you know tell you to buy your stocks and all that stuff which, again, you know, I don't think I say this enough. I want you to have stocks. I do. You got to be diversified. Don't put all your money into gold and silver. I know some of you do, and it's worked out just fine. But diversif nothing wrong uh, with that diversification. But, but they were talking about how, well, we don't actually really believe what he said. <laughs> Now, they didn't say it like that, but they did. They said, well, you know, okay, yeah, the taper thing, uh, because they've got problems anyway. All that money at the end. By the way, another reverse repo record last night. Uh, I think we got to $1.4 trillion. Uh, but neither here nor there. They're, they're, they're of the opinion, Jason, that the Fed... They're never going to raise rates. That that was kind of uh, the feeling on Wall Street yesterday. Yeah, I I, I think that was definitely the reaction because look at the uh, look at how much money poured into the markets, right? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. A lot of money poured in there. A lot of them, and when they were doing this and in the, in, in the comments that they were making, uh, that was the feeling we got. And, and, and here's that's fine. That's all well and good. Right, if that's what you want to believe. But if you actually think that's good for America, that's the part that's so uh, disturbing. Because we, we, we know inflation is here. And, and whether or not that, because eventually, at some point, I think, I think, Jason, at some point it'll be transitory. Right. 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 I mean, at <laughs> some point, right, prices will have stopped going up. At some point, 
how much money you need to pay a person to actually show up will stop going up. And, and at some point, uh, the supply chain uh, disruption may come to an end. Well, it will. Eventually, it will. And the cost of a container, you know, the problem is, I don't even know what, we don't even know what the high price is yet. No, Joe. There's whether a- it's for a, a labor cost, whether it's for a container cost, whether it's for to get a trucker to actually truck your stuff, right? We, we don't know what the high point is. So we'll have no idea. Here's the only thing we do know. It's not going back to where it was. And my guess is best case scenario for some things, and, and very few, maybe some of the things, hey, the cost is going to be 10 or 20% more. Look at labor right now. I mean, can anybody hire anybody for less than 15 bucks? In a lot of places, 20. I mean, listen, B, B of A's already said, hey, by 2025, we're going to be paying $25 an hour. You know, and, and uh, Amazon now paying 18 and this and that. You know, these are huge jumps. Yeah, 25 if they're lucky, Joe. If things, <laughs> if things I mean, get back to normal, it's some, some sort of sense of normal, they'll be lucky to be paying 25 Right. A, a, a cargo <laughs> container used to cost like three or four grand. Right now we're at like twenty five k, and I'm and we're not at the top. By the way, uh, did you see the CFO from Costco? He says that shipping delays, truck driver shortages, they're having a hard time keeping products on the shelf. So they were they were on their earnings call, and again, notice how. No one's talking about earnings season when you're talk when you turn on the TV. They not, they don't talk about it. It's actually not that good outside of the headliners. But Costco is saying, you know, here we go again, Jason. Right. They're going to be putting limits on toilet paper, paper towels, bottled water, high demand cleaning products now I, I is that bleach is it those the the wipes i'm not sure uh they said uh, in the call they weren't saying how many you could buy my guess is normally would cost them you're probably going to get one they said new products are uh there's limits and challenges in getting new products into the store uh they, they say that they've got Plenty, now they've got plenty of merchandise, but there's two or three week delays on getting it delivered. So again, now Costco saying, hey, listen, we can get it here to the U.S. We just can't get it into the store. Uh, they're saying that Costco is placing earlier and earlier orders to get what it needs. He added the company has chartered three ocean vessels for next year's transportation containers between Asia and the United States. Each ship can carry 800 to 1,000 containers at a time. So this is what Costco do. They just got their own ships, Jason. Yes. Yes, and I uh, I got some some news about Walmart. I'm gonna let you continue to continue going on because I don't think everybody's gonna be suffering this Christmas. I think there's a, a couple of big players out there that are more than ready for this, Joe. I, I think we're what we're gonna be seeing in the next few months is the crushing of small businesses and small competition. Oh and, well, listen, if you read between the lines of that report, it's exactly what they're saying. Costco essentially, hey, we've got our regular ships that you know they and they don't. They, Costco didn't buy the ships. What Costco did instead is, hey, we rented three more ships to help bring products back and forth, and those three ships were probably not probably, but those were ships most likely that had. 
15, 20, maybe even 50 small businesses that were that whose products were going to be on those ships that are not going to be on those ships, Jason. Right, right. <laughs> so you want to hear something? Let me, let me give you my little piece of information for the day. And we'll, we'll talk about more on Monday, too, because I'll get more information. But uh, I have a, a relative, a brother, who drives a truck for Walmart. And the way Walmart prepares for Christmas shopping season is, is they, hey, they get all loaded up uh, on the last week of September. Yeah, I was going to say right now, they're, they're, they're preparing right now. Nope, nope, not this year for Walmart. They got loaded up last week of August. They, they went a month ahead of time. They told all their truck drivers that this is going to be the busiest Christmas season in Walmart history. Be ready for it. They don't even have enough guys trained for the direct from the shipping docks straight to the warehouse type of shipping they're going to be doing. Yeah, well, that's the problem, right? They don't have the bodies to do it. Well, well so you, you better believe they, Walmart's going to get it done, though. <laughs> well, well, that's right. But what does that mean to the small guys out there that are, are going to try to get through this so-called supply shortage season? Which, you know, uh, Joe, Brian, we, Brian and I on our show, Joe, we talk about all the time, you know, false scarcity. And it always feeds the bigger companies, Joe. Why do I feel like this is a apocalypse for the small companies this, this Christmas season? And weird things are happening. So this is out of China this morning. They're having power problems. So, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about Europe. That natural gas prices have gotten so expensive that companies shut down instead of operating. It happened to people in Texas. Remember Texas? Oh yeah. When it, when they had that freeze, if you you were better off losing power versus not losing power. Cuz if you didn't lose power, the the rate that the utilities charged you for power was off the charts. Uh Kansas people were getting charged Talking about natural gas bills that were five hundred or a thousand dollars a month, fifty thousand dollars, Jason. Yeah, because uh, of timing of things. Uh, but China today says that they are taking, that they're having power problems, and they're now going to be doing a California, and they're having rolling power cuts that are going to be forced onto the major factory hub provinces in China. So think about COVID. Now think about, hey, you know what? We can't produce as much as we need to because uh, we don't have any power now, Jason. Yes. I, I, do you believe that? I don't know if I even believe that. No, though. I don't <laughs> believe it at all. Because you sound very convincing like you do believe it. That's why I have to say it. <laughs> I don't believe it. No, do I believe they're going to do it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I believe that. Do I believe that? that no. It's, it's not like China cares. Hey, throw another scoop of coal into the fire, right? I mean, I, I, I've never seen anything like this. And, and I'm watching this, and, I, and I'm trying to get my arms around it. Think about this, Joe. That we, uh, And I'll, I'll, I'll leave the company unnamed, but it's got a small business. And they have a product, and uh, what they sell, they they actually they had a uh, with this inflationary cycle we're in, they, they had a huge selling. They just sold all of their product. They completely sold. Okay, now you got your you got your money, your profits from your sales. You go back to order, and this company is told they can't get any more of their product for two months. So the inflation does what it normally does. And now their profits are gone because to buy more product to sell to the customer, they, there's there's no margin there anymore. And and, and think about this, Joe. I, I was watching a guy on uh, YouTube, uh, and this guy went to a caveman diet to lose some weight. He felt he was a little bloated. And you can see in his videos, he, he, he did well. He lost some weight. Uh, he did this in May, May of this year. And he was buying boxes of uh, ground beef patties for fast, for, for a, a quick meal. And they were $25 a box. And he's been buying the exact same box. A few months later, we're, talking, we're still talking 2021, May of 2021, a couple months later, let's just say July, 
$28 a box. And now as of September, $31 a box. 24%. Where did it start? Where, did, where was the starting point? $25. Now it's 31 Yeah, He did the math. 24% since May. And, and if you're a business and you sell all your product, how do you keep up with that? But I know who does keep up with it. A company like Walmart who, hey, let's just sell this stuff at a loss. And uh, to keep our profit margins up for our stockholders, we'll get our cheap money from the Fed, borrowed at almost 0%. And we'll just throw that at profits to make our profits look big, crush the small businesses. Yay, Walmart. Walmart's the, uh, the big winner here. I mean, the Rockefellers did it with Standard Oil back in the 1800s. They bought all the oil barrels. They, they couldn't even fill the oil barrels, but they, they bought all the oil barrels they could. And then the, the smaller producers, they had nothing to put their oil in, so they folded which Standard Oil then was the big winner. 90, they, at one point, they were 96% of all oil was Standard Oil in the 1800 show. When we get back, the Department of Agriculture has given us an update on what we can expect beef, chicken, and pork prices to be. Yeah, uh, I, I got one. It's not going to be lower. We'll be right back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. I told you, Jason's the busiest man on the radio. Uh, you know, he's uh, doing four jobs all at the same time: beef, pork, and chicken. No wonder why Walmart. It's going to be the busiest holiday season ever. They're right. His prices are going to be up twenty, thirty uh, percent. They're saying the storage, the cold storage continues to be under strain. They say uh, beef reserves are down 8%. That's the, that's the good number. Poultry supplies down 20%. Pork supplies down 44%. And again, uh, we, we've been talking about this for, for months now. Uh, it's going to be painful. The, this, the, the last half of this year is uh, going to be very painful. Uh, the shopping, the shelves are going to be sparse. Products going to be expensive. And, and I hate to, to say it, but more than likely, it's going to be the, the winter of the haves and the have-nots. Right. The big major conglomerates that are able to spend the money uh, to to get product on the shelves, and then everybody else who doesn't. Right, most you know, you're a small business. You're not contracting for three ships. You know, that's just not going to happen. Right, you may just need uh, three containers on one ship that has a thousand containers on. It. You know, it's it's just going to be. Uh, a, a tough winner, but how about this? Uh, the the Bureau of Water is out saying that Lake Powell and Lake Mead, yeah, things are getting a whole lot worse instead of a whole lot better. Remember this year, because I was on Lake Powell this year, and I can tell you, wow, is the water down. Really down. And, and it can be very misleading. Uh, when they talk about uh, the situation, because they'll say, uh, as an example, on on Lake Lake Powell, the the amount of water, they say, if the water level drops between three thousand below three thousand four hundred and ninety feet, three thousand four hundred and ninety feet, that's just the water level, right where the dam is, but. When you get past that, the the water levels are, are down. I mean, about a third of Lake Powell and maybe close to half of Lake Powell is no longer accessible by boat. I mean, that's how that's that's what we're talking about. But this year, remember, I told you how they were re releasing water from reservoirs in Wyoming, in Colorado, New Mexico to to keep enough water in Lake Powell, in Lake Mead. Well, apparently, they hadn't updated the water levels 
with 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 that happening. So they just finally got around to well, because you can't just keep releasing water from these reservoirs, right? Okay, so here we come, summer of 2022. To, hey, let's release more water. Well, uh, well, yeah, we'd love to, but you know what? We released all that water last year. Now they're saying that the the electricity is probably okay next year. Right now, they're saying that there's only a 3% chance that the water levels at Lake Powell will fall below the minimum level necessary to run the hydroelectric plant there. So both Lake Powell and Lake Mead, the water level's got to be so high to get the turbines to spin. And if the water gets below a certain level, they're not spinning. You're not going to get power. Here's the, here's the bad thing. They said, hey, we think we can sneak by in 2022. 2023. Right, and this is today. So think about it, And you know how government agencies work. But they're saying there's a 34% chance we will get no power. And you start thinking about places like Las Vegas. It pretty much gets most of their power there. California, Arizona. We've been talking about these power things. And, and part, of, part of the power problems we're facing are things like this, where it's hydroelectric and all that stuff, and there's no water and, and whatnot. This inflation thing that we keep talking about, this thing could get really ugly. Could you imagine now all of a sudden uh, power rates doubling or tripling? Not just, now forget about just the, for you and I. But think about every business out there. Think about everybody that produces something, the factories and, and the West, and all of a sudden, hey, I've got to pay twice as much or three times as much for power. And the and the chain reaction effect, this is all gonna have this is things are getting crazy, Jason. It's so yeah. hard to keep up. It really is. You're just sitting there going, Man, when is this gonna stop? And you get you kinda of gotta learn as things go on. It's almost like you yeah, you, know, you almost have to do a Monday morning Monday morning quarterback after things have happened to, to figure out what, what they did, which is why I liked which is why I brought my brother's comment on the air about, uh, you know, Walmart's ready for this. I was wondering why these ships are sitting out in the ocean, uh, Joe. Inflation is a tax. And how do, how do you, how do you uh, operate in that sort of environment? You set up supply lines. And why do I feel like they need a whole lot of extra ships sitting out there? Because if you can sit them out there and you, you put hardly anything on the shelves, just barely have the supply lines going, and then, boom, Christmas season, you have it sitting there in the ocean. Flood the markets, get as much as you can sold, but make sure there's enough ships out there because you got to be able to replace these items as they're sold, Joe. And, and like I said, the small guys can't do this. Only a big company can can pay the inflation tax. And man, that's such a great point. And it's, no wonder it's, there's there's uh, container shortages, Joe. Yeah, you're sitting there thinking about there's seventy something ships down out there. That's just I one mean, port. It's it's just nuts to think about. Uh, all of the things that what are and again companies don't do that. Walmart doesn't do that unless hey we know six months from now that stuff that was sitting out in the ocean is going to cost us twice as much. And so you're right, Jason. Think about this: the little guy. He doesn't have products sitting out in the ocean. No, he doesn't. Right? What, what, what are they forced to do? Wait three months to get their stuff. I got to double my price. Yeah, and then right? wait. I got to be uncompetitive. You sell it all, Joe, and then you have to wait for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a Friday. Hey, we'll be back. Patriot Radio News Hour. 800-951-0592. Gold's up 10, 1753. Silver's down 9 cents. Uh, at 22.41, uh, the Dow was down a little bit today. Uh, you know, yesterday we told you about FedEx and UPS. I've got more data. This It's even worse 
uh, than what I told you yesterday. So six to eight percent increase on on shipping rates. And you're like, oh, okay. Well, you know, Jay Powell says inflation is five and a half percent. UPS and FedEx said ah, it's more like six to eight percent. Uh-uh. No, that's just that was just the introductory number. So six to eight percent across the board, and then this is from FedEx. Effective November first, twenty twenty one. Okay, so six to eight percent increase in the shipping cost. They're going to start adding a fuel surcharge increase, and I'm like, but you know, crude oil's low seventy. By the way, it's, it's, if we, if winter is cold as what they're saying it's going to be, crude oil will be approaching $100. But FedEx is going to start on, on November 1st, a fuel sh uh, charge increase, all FedEx packages. They don't say how much. Probably uh, they're going to have the ability to change it at will. Effective January 17th, 2022. So this transitory inflation nonsense. FedEx Freight will introduce a no shipment tendered surcharge. Now this is for people like like uh, we use FedEx now. FedEx, you, you can set up a, a, a delivery schedule where the FedEx driver just shows up at your business on certain days of the week, saying, hey, do you have any packages? Well, you can set up, hey, show up on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And usually the fact if you have something, you give it to them, you don't, they leave. They're saying, if our FedEx driver shows up and there's no product to ship, in other words, he showed up, hey, we don't have anything today, they're charging you. Effective January 17th. Out of delivery area surcharges will be tacked on. Now, I don't know how you know. Apparently, hey, oh, that's a, that place is out of the way. Yeah, you're going to have to pay more for that. Uh, again, January 17th. Delivery and return surcharge will be accessed uh, uh, on packages that are delivered? Yes. Well, isn't that? I mean, your job is to deliver packages. Well, we know. But if we do, we're going to charge you for uh, We're going to throw a surcharge for the delivery. And then if it's not delivered, let's say uh, we ship adult signature required. And they go to your house and you're not there. And so they don't do the delivery. They're, they're charging us for that. Isn't that wonderful? Well, we're not done. Uh, effective January 24th. Additional handling, handling and surcharges for oversized surcharged rates will be added to any shipments that are, I don't know how big, right? You know, uh, bigger than a, a, a small box. Uh, UP, that was FedEx. Uh, UPS says rate increases are going to be announced in the coming weeks. And they say that the annual price increases will be the biggest they've seen in decades, Jason. Yeah, they make it really confusing, don't they, to, to, as to what you're actually paying for. They, they, they want to... Uh, they want to show the customer that it's not my fault, and and, and my advice would be maybe should, they should hire me to, to help them with marketing because I'd just say why don't we just throw it all into one bag? We'll call it the "it's not my fault" charge, and you can just rise it or lower it as you wish. <laughs> well, you know what FedEx has turned into, and you it's the airlines. That's right. It's the airlines. Oh, um, you want an aisle seat? Well, that's extra. Oh, you want a seat with two more inches of leg room? Oh, that's extra. Oh, wait, you actually are going on. Wait, you want to check a bag? Oh, well, yeah, well that's extra. Right, right Joe. Remember just, when you used did, to book your flight and, and you know, you got two bags of person and all that. So everything was included in the price of the ticket. Right. 
right now, hey, the ticket's three hundred dollars. Oh wait, but you checked two bags and and you wanted to sit on the aisle. Right now, all of a sudden, it's four hundred fifty. They just don't want to explain to the customers, Joe, why prices are higher. They they want to give you the excuse on the front end, so you don't have to ask. You know, it stops you from asking the question on the back end. It's just incredible. <laughs> I just, I, I mean. You're raising prices six to eight percent, and then it looks like with all the surcharges, right? What are we really talking about? Right, fifteen percent, twenty percent. Trying to hide the inflation. <laughs> and, and you know what? I bet you it does. I bet you the Fed. Well, you know, no, oh, uh, FedEx rates are only up six percent. Yeah, we can't count all the. It's not our fault. Charges. Yeah, these surcharges. <laughs> well, what if you didn't have any surcharges? <laughs> The way I'm reading it, it sounds like it's almost impossible to ship a package without it. Wow. Wow. How much you want to bet the real, real, real big companies get to negotiate those away? Uh, by the way, uh, you don't think we, the Congress and the Federal Reserve don't know what's coming? There was a bill introduced in the House of Representatives in July. I'm going to tell you what they threw in. You know, this is one of these, at the end of the bill, they threw this thing in there and hope nobody will notice. Well, somebody did. And I'm going to tell you all about it before we leave you on this Friday. 800-951-0592. I'll go really quickly here. Uh, Today, I've got 50 $10 liberties at $1,025. I do not. Hold on, I'm getting I'm getting the no sign. Scratch that. I do not have that. Uh, that that is out. <laughs> well, that that didn't take long. That is out. That that this and this is how fast it happens. Uh, I do have forty twenty dollar liberties at two thousand forty. Uh, again, we've been telling you there's not a lot out there. Uh, Silver eagles are have disappeared again. Uh, junk silver's out there, but uh, you'll notice our quarter sale, that's done. Uh, prices uh, continue to move higher in the physical markets. 800-951-0592. I'll talk about this again, Jason. We'll talk about this on Monday. But the digital asset market, digital asset market structure and investor protection act. Okay, the... We, we want to, we'll call it the digital asset bill. I want to read the authority that they gave the central bank in this bill to supervise and regulate through the Secretary of the Treasury the issues and retirement of Federal Reserve notes, both physical and digital to prescribe rules and regulations, including appropriate technology, authorizing the Federal Reserve System and its Board of Governors to issue digital versions of Federal Reserve notes, authorize the use and distribute ledger technology for the creation, distribution, and Recordation of all transactions involving digital Federal Reserve notes. Hmm. Man, I didn't even know the Fed had fully admitted yet that they were going to a digital dollar. I think you understand now, right, Jason? And what yeah. are some of the key words in that? Recordation of all transactions, right. just like we told you. Yeah. I think the Fed feels they can do whatever they want. I think they've, they're, they're showing it, Joe. I mean, when were the coin shortage last year? Yes. When you read the little signs on the, at the grocery stores about the coin shortages, it says the Federal Reserve is having a coin shortage. They don't even mint the coins. That's the Treasury. Right. right. <laughs> and, and, yeah, there you go, Joe. It's all there. So in, in case there was any illusion, this is already ready. Congress has already given the authority to the Federal Reserve. Remember what Jay Powell finally admitted 
you know, no one wanted to talk about it on Wednesday because they were worried about plots on a dots on a plot. It's it's not important that we were first. It's important that we got it right. What's important is when the Great Reset comes. They know the reset's coming. Believe me. I know how this inflation thing ends. And it has nothing to do with transitory. It ends in a crash. That's how it ends. That's when the digital money comes. That's when the haircuts are going to happen. That's when you don't want to have... You want to have the least amount of money in the system before that happens. 800 951 592